spins and kicks it back out. Here's Jacob Cullen, left side three, swish, swish for Jacob Cullen. He's got 21 and five triples. 74-69, Kansas State. The beard, man, the beard get noticed, man. I don't get noticed, people don't know who I am. They just be like, oh, you that bearded guy. <laughs> that happened to me all the time. And then, other night I got pulled over and the cop said it to me. The cop pulled up on me, I was dropping my little cousin off. He had went to the gym with me. And the cop pulled up on me, hopped out the car, ran over to my car. And then as he was getting ready to tell me to get out the car, he looked at me, he was like, wait, you're that bearded dude from K-State, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, man, I messed up my brackets against you guys. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I get that same story. Jacob Pullen entered his college basketball career as the one not many knew much about in the 2007 class of Mike Beasley and Bill Walker. He was the six-foot guard from Maywood, Illinois, who hailed from the same high school as NBA greats like Doc Rivers and Michael Finley. But no one quite knew what to think. He was the one who dished the ball to Beasley, the gunner, and the one first-year head coach Frank Martin would ride harder than anyone. He was the kid who said he was coming to Kansas State to play basketball for one reason. I'm coming to win, nothing else. That's about it. In three seasons with his head coach and his school, Pullen has scored over 1,500 points and is 24 wins away from single-handedly being the winningest player in school history. He's made a name for himself not because he was a trendy ball player to come from a hallowed basketball city, but because of what he's done since he left. These are the people and the places that helped make Jacob Pullen what he is today. When I was a freshman, my older brother, three years older than me, and he was a senior, I used to steal his car if I would beat him up in the morning with no license. And I used to have to start school at nine, but I would wake up about 8.57 and shoot here every morning, try to beat that last bell so they'll let me in. Because if you're not here by like 9.05, they lock these doors and you can't get in. Athletics, I don't know, I don't know how they cherish athletics in, in Kansas, but here, you know, basketball was like one of the biggest things you could do just because so many people had played. Jacob Pullen. Oh, he takes nice that. by Townsend. Pullen with the three point. I knew mean, he was going to take that all away. You can't get Pullen that shot. This is the detention. I used to be in there a lot. You get caught after the bell. You got to go there. Um, you get caught in the wrong lunch time. You got to go there. And I used to have lunch a lot. <laughs> Another place Jake found himself early in his high school career was on the bench during varsity basketball games. The proviso roster littered with Division I talent allowed limited room in the lineup for the rising sophomore. But the guard remained focused through the years, and his recruitment began to heat up. When I was going to my senior year after Nike camp, I talked to Coach Hill. Um, Coach Delonte Hill called me, and you know that was right after Mike had committed, and Bill was already coming early. And that's when he told me, he was like, man, you got a real chance that if you commit, that the ball will be in your hand a lot. And it wasn't even a real recruiting process. It wasn't like mail, mail, call, call. You know, we, we contacted, he contacted me a few times, let me know the situation. And, you know, I thought, you know, I, I had took a few visits unofficial, and then I just felt like, you know, that was the place I wanted to be. So I ended my recruiting, because recruiting was like the worst thing in the world to me. All the coaches texting you and calling you, mail every day. You know, it was times it was times when there's an open period, but it texts you all night, man. One coach used to text me like, man, sweet dreams. I was like, man, I used to hate that. So when I got done with my recruitment, I was like, it was like a weight off my shoulder. Because as you're going through the process, you know, you're trying to impress people, you're trying to make the schools realize why they should have you. And, and once you get that off your chest, I felt like I played a lot better my senior year because I knew that, you know, I had nothing to worry about. I had signed my letter and ten and stuff. I actually signed my letter here. This was my favorite class right here, Mr. McGrady. This was um, African American Studies. 
We watch the movie every day in that class. I could be 10 minutes late. Uh, I know Mr. McGrady had never turned me in because we had watched the movie. And this wasn't even up when I was in high school. Mike Finley, Gene Moore, he stayed down the street from my house. When I was growing up, it was always somebody that, that was trying to be better than you, always somebody who, who was putting in work. Like, you, like I say, you know, you always felt like you had to get better. And competition out here was, was good. You know, it wasn't like people was, it was bad players. We produced a lot of D1 players, probably a lot, most in, in the Chicagoland area. Maywood, Illinois, population 25,000, a township rich with history thanks to Proviso East Athletics. However, the root of such talent stems back farther than just the days of Poland to a slab of concrete where the sneakers of the city's best jumped for the rim long before donning high school jerseys. Like in summertime, Charles Richardson, Shannon D, they would go up there and stack their team. And then, you know, other players from like St. Joe's, where Dimitri McCamey, Evan Turner, and them went, they would come up, they would come up to the park with their five and, you know, it would be, it would get so, so intense that, you know, it would just be crowds of people outside watching, like cars would be stopped in the middle of the street, like, just to see it, because you never know what was, Corey would come up there, Corey McGetty from Fenway, like, just how, how Shannon used to do stuff up there, with his, he used to just dunk everything in high school. I just feel like all of those people was able to make it, so it's gotta be a way that I can make it.